Good morning, I'm Katie. Welcome to my garden in Zone 6B, Rhode Island. I am using a new microphone this week and it actually did not record any sound for the first couple minutes of the video I recorded this morning, so I'm dubbing it after the fact. Um, so this sound should be pretty good. Unfortunately, you won't get to hear the birds and stuff in the background. And then hopefully the rest of the video with the new microphone, the sound will be good. But over here we have the shade garden. Um, these are the blue angel type uh, hostas. They're starting to put up some flower stalks. They like it over here. Seems like a little bit early for the flowers, but uh, that's kind of the way things are going this year. Um, we also have some astilbes in this part of the garden that are starting to put up some flower stalks. I did cut back some of the leaves of the big hostas here to make way for the astilbes and allow them to get a little bit of light. Um, they should be fine. Hostas are, are pretty hardy and uh, I've dug them up, divided them, and left them sitting in bags for weeks and they've been fine. I've done the dividing and transplanting at all times of years, all times of year and they've been fine. Um, the one thing that this specific type of hosta doesn't like is it doesn't like to be in full sun. The leaves get kind of brown and crispy if it's in full sun, but otherwise they're pretty easy. Here we have the um, more still bees and the stained glass hosta on the left and right there, which are looking really nice. That's the stained glass hosta. I love the lime green color. Everything's a little wet this morning. It's uh, We actually got quite a bit of rain the past couple of days. I'll have to check my rain gauge once we get to the back garden. Here along the front walkway is the lavender phenomenal, which is growing quite nicely and looking pretty nice. Starting to color up. It'll be nice when that flowers. They'll get kind of heavy and hopefully spill over a little bit onto the walkway. And then we have my one lone Allium atropurpureum. I think I planted about 10 of these bulbs. And this is the only one that sent up a flower. And at first I wasn't sure if I liked it. I do like it. I think the color goes really well. Uh, with some of the other things that I have in the front garden here. But I'm not sure. If I only get one out of ten, I'm not sure if I'm gonna bother planting some more. But it goes well, it goes nicely with this Coral Bells Berry Smoothie. It's a very similar color. Also kind of goes well with the brick walkway, which needs to be cleaned. And it goes quite well with the red acer Japanese maple on the left side of the front garden. And over here we have the ladies mantle, which has all of its beautiful citron flower stalks. And they're starting to fall over a bit. Well, it's starting to look a little wild, which I love. I love the citron lime greens. It goes with all of the pinky purple flowers I have in the garden. Same thing with this Japanese forest grass. Uh, I don't love the spirea, but it is what it is. Here is a yarrow. I think this one is sort of like a reddish pink color see that once it comes out. The quick fire hydrangea in the back up against the house has lots of flowers coming on it. This here in the front is Allium Millennium which will come out um, a bit later. Last year I think it was about mid-July. And then these things in the front are Betony Humello and I'm starting to see some flowers on those. 
And those are kind of a nice flower in the front after the peonies are done. Kind of tall stalks with sort of like pinky purple flowers on top. They're pretty cool. It's not um, a plant that I see often around here. The irises, uh, the purple ones are done. The white ones still have a couple flowers, but those are mostly done as well. And then here's what was the most spectacular peony show. And they had started to fall. You can see some of the remnants of the petals down below. So we came out and cleaned that up over the weekend. They pretty much lasted exactly a week and they looked really good for just a couple days. So it's kind of a shame. They're pretty spectacular when they are in bloom. There are a couple. There's still this one. We did leave a couple buds that looked like they might open. But they are very short-lived. That's five plants. Two different varieties. We've got the Napita cat mint. This one is starting to fall over. I think I did pinch that one, but looking a little ragged. Then we've got a Bobo hydrangea. There's a dahlia that I popped back in there that um, probably needs to be pinched. Sedums. And check out this hardy hibiscus. This is a summerific, very awesome hardy hibiscus. And uh, just a couple weeks ago, this thing was about an inch tall. Now it's big enough that I need to support it. I took these uh, crescent-shaped supports that I had on the peonies. I took a couple off as soon as I cut the flowers off and moved them over here. I specifically liked this variety of the hardy hibiscus because when the leaves come out, they have a tinge of red on the outside, uh, which I think goes nicely with the red acer behind it. Our cherry laurels that we are creating a hedge up against the fence with, so it's the one on the back on either the left and the right, are growing a ton this year. David Austin, the generous gardener climbing rose is, I would say it was um, a little nicer last week, but there's still plenty of blooms on it. I've been deadheading every other day or so. Yeah, you want to cut off the flowers on roses once they're spent. Otherwise, this little thing will turn into a rose hip um, and the plant will put energy into doing that instead of into giving you more flowers. Here is a hydrangea. This is the endless summer bloom struck, which has tons of flowers on it. This looks like it's going to be a good year again for hydrangeas. Last year was an amazing year for hydrangeas but the couple years before that weren't great. I think it has to do with uh, the winters we have here. If there's sort of like a prolonged wet cold period in the spring, uh, some of the old wood dies off and the hydrangeas don't do very well. Behind that is a viburnum, which has gotten quite tall and that is also about to bloom. It's kind of similar looking to the hydrangea, but the flowers stay flat. They don't um, puff up into balls, sort of the, you know, mop head shape like the hydrangeas. Uh, shrub roses have started to bloom. I had to come in and cut those back a little because they were starting to grow all over everything else in here. We also have 
some poppies that have buds on them. And here's the geranium roseanne. And that started blooming about a week ago and will bloom for the entire rest of the season. I love this plant. It is beautiful and it stays low and kind of spills out over the edge of the border. Um, so great edge of the border plant. My napita, this one over two over here are looking, uh, oh, we must be in the flight path today. Very rarely will be in the flight path to the airport and get some interesting noises. <laughs> anyway, here are the napitas and I cut those back before they flowered, which I think was a good choice because they're flowering um, and flopping over, flowering for longer and not flopping over quite as much yet. I also starting to get a couple of these Allium Ceruleum, I think it's called. And so far, like the color is really cool. They're, they're a true blue, which is hard to find in the plant world. Um, but they're kind of small, so I don't know if you're really gonna be able to see them that much in the garden. There's another one. There's also a Phlox blooming. And right behind, of course, is the shrub roses, which are going to pop, and they're just going to be like a riot of pink pretty soon here. The knockout pink rose in the back is still going strong. And there in the back is the pink knockout rose. Uh, that usually has a huge flush of bl blooms here in early June. And then if I deadhead it, which I have been, it'll um, kind of have a lull for a month or so, and then they'll start blooming again throughout the rest of the summer. But the best show is usually um, here early in June. There's some more salvias. Some purple, blue salvia, compact white salvia. We have Russian sage here in the background. Let's cut that back because it was starting to grow on top of all these plants. There's some more of the geranium roseanne. We've got some bees balm tucked in here. This one is like a bubblegum pink. The Golden Jubilee Agastache there in the back. Another plant that I love was I think the purple or the citron. Lime green looks really good with my purple plants. And then uh, the tree we planted last year, the Kusa dogwood, uh, is still flowering. Kusa dogwoods are nice. The flowers last a long time. Um, which is kind of rare for flowering trees. It's usually they're, they bloom and they're spectacular for like a week or two and that's it. There's some more of the lavender phenomenal. I've got more salvias back here. Um, this purple tall plant is a meteor shower verbena bonariensis and I planted that year ago no two years ago and it self seeds and comes back every year but I've never seen it this tall which I like the tall verbena glenariensis so I actually planted some from seed in the back as well um, so that's pretty cool and then we have a tough stuff hydrangea which is looking very full this year another one back there here's the liatris sort of like a pink color. We've got a couple, you probably can't see that right here, here, and here. We still have a couple Allium spherocephalons that the bunny didn't eat, which I'm kind of upset about that because those are some of my favorite flowers. We've got more geranium roseanne, dianthus over here, more compact white salvia, and then in here, we have uh, Veronica. I think this one's called Royal Candles. 
and that is coloring up. It's usually kind of the next thing after the salvias because um, these salvias will go by and then I'll cut them and then they'll come again a little bit later. More dianthus. Oh look, there's a bee friend. Hello there, bee friend. Hope you enjoy your breakfast. Got the butterfly bush in the back. I cut that back to, I don't know, like about 12 inches. It's already grown that much. The physocarpus in the back. There are the new ones. More salvias. Some more bees bomb back here. A lot of this stuff back here has been eaten quite a bit by the, by the rabbit, which is kind of a shame. But these clumps of, are supposed to be white cone flowers. It looks like there's a couple buds on them, but they're supposed to be really tall and they're supposed to fill in this whole area. Um, so I don't know, I guess the bunny pruned them for me. Up here we have a Vitex bush. It's finally filled in and gotten quite large. That'll have bluish purple flower spikes later on. Um, the daylilies are blooming a lot. Behind that, some more Russian sage, a uh, little lime hydrangea, and then on the end here, we've got Amsonia, and then a uh, sedum ground cover in the bottom. I think everything's looking pretty lush in the front here. Oh, here in the back. Things are starting to grow in the cut flower garden. There's actually some buds on some flowers. I guess this is running today. News to me, I actually thought it was running yesterday. Oh well, it's good to know. Um, yeah, so I had planted a bunch of squashes on the end of the rows. I figured they could spill out um, onto the lawn since they get quite large and cut, kind of cover the uh, irrigation system. Oh, those are growing big. I mean, not big, but they're growing, growing pretty quickly. This is a zucchini, and as you can see, it has a bunch of buds there in the middle. Uh, another zucchini, and those two over there are a patty pan squash and a yellow straight neck squash. This thing has tons of little flowers on it. Usually the male flowers will come first, and then once there's enough male flowers where the plant thinks that it will get pollinated, it'll open up a female flower and the female flowers are what turn into the actual food that you eat. I'm trying to see. Yeah, you can tell, like the ones at the bottom are gonna open first. And this one here just has a straight um, little connector there. And that's a male. This one here just has a straight connector. That's a male. Um, but this one here um, has sort of a little bit more of an engorged connector stock below the tiny little flower. And that will turn into a zucchini. It's a little bit easier to see once the flowers get a little bit bigger. But kind of interesting how that works. Oh, lovely. I actually had a flower starting to open up on this ageratum yesterday, and now it looks like it has been eaten. It looked kind of like this. 
like small little fuzzy purple and blue flowers. Which I'd love to see what they look like, but see if my little friend here keeps eating everything. Um, then we have the Chinese forget-me-nots. And those um, also have little flower buds on them. Mm, I need to weed in here again. I did put some new uh, frosted explosion grass in here and that seems not to have been eaten yet. The other night I was um, standing at the kitchen window watching dishes and I looked out here and the bunny was sitting right here and it was eating that dahlia. So I grabbed my dogs and I said, go out, you guys go outside and scare that bunny away. And they came out and they ran in completely the wrong direction and basically did nothing. Calendula. I always think that this, whatever this is, I can't remember which flower, is a weed. It kind of looks like that persicaria weed we have a lot of, but it's not. We have the dahlia bed. And they're definitely getting munched on, but still growing. Uh, I did pinch a couple of the ones that have gotten quite big. As you can see here, I just cut off the central growing point, left a couple sets of leaves beneath it, and now that dahlia plant will branch out and create a lot more, um, you know, two branches instead of one, which means more flowers and sort of a bushier plant that will be less likely to fall over and break and get top heavy. The squash on the squash tunnel is getting large and some of it is starting to climb up the trellis, which is cool. Um, this one, I think, I can't remember if this is like a honey nut or something. It's not quite climbing yet, but as you can see, it does have tendrils, so it will eventually attach. Tromboncino was taking its sweet time. I think this might be a spaghetti squash. As you can see, this one I actually transplanted a little bit later. And the ones, they were in tiny little uh, two inch containers in the greenhouse and they just got enormous. Um, so I did put those in, it's like a little bit of an insurance policy. I wanted to try, we, we usually get bad squash vine borers, They're like these uh, larvae that get inside the stalk of certain types of squash. Zucchini, spaghetti squash, delicata squash um, are some of the ones that we usually have a problem with and they basically like eat the plant from the inside out and they'll destroy the stems. Um, but I've heard different ways of dealing with it, um, one of which is to just plant your squash later, like the third week in June. So I figured I'd put some in a little bit later and see if that helps if those survive. Um, but yeah, this one I transplanted already has flowers on it. Got, um, this is a melon starting to attach. Got the other dahlia bed. And are those? Oh yeah, I pinched this one. As you can see there, I cut off the center stalk and um, it's starting to branch out. And we've got more flowers over here. 
Got the espalier apple trees. Um, yeah, everything's coming along. I feel like I'm always impatient at this time of year because I want my trellises to be covered immediately. And it did seem like it happened. I do remember being frustrated last year, but it did seem like it happened pretty quickly where they got covered. Um, so hopefully if everything goes according to plan, these arch trellis will be covered with squash plants pretty soon here. And over here, um, the lettuce green stock, a lot of this is really struggled due to the heat. I'm probably going to have to say goodbye to some of these lettuces. I tasted them and most of them still taste good. This flashy trout back lettuce kind of tasted pretty bitter. And the chijimisai, sort of like a tatsoi, Asian tatsoi blend. Um, I just pull flowers off that and it doesn't taste great. Which is a bummer because, I mean, it basically just started growing. We haven't really eaten any of it yet and it's already flowering. I thought it was supposed to be heat tolerant, but um, apparently not. The herb staircase is looking good, except for the cilantro is starting to go to seed. It still does taste good. I've been using it. Um, the other things are doing well. Mints. I have some stevia plants that I grew from seed, and I just made um, a stevia simple syrup with it which is a zero calorie sweetening option. Uh, basically took like about 15 or so leaves and I steeped them in hot water like you would a tea and I made a simple syrup. It does have a slightly herbal taste. Um, I, I use it in mojitos. I actually also used it in a stir fry that I made the other night for dinner. But I'm just kind of experimenting with different recipes with that. But stevia plant is a good way to get a sweet taste with no calories and no sugar. And the other herbs, something interesting going on with this strawberry green stalk. There's actually a bird has decided to make its nest in the strawberry tower. I'm always a little weary to go near here because the bird sometimes is in there and flies out and scares the crap out of me. But in there is a little bird's nest and a bunch of eggs. I don't think, oh, there's the bird. Ha! Ah, happens every time. Well, there's the eggs. It doesn't seem to be hurting anything. Not eating strawberries yet. It's not really hurting anything at the moment. I'd actually rather have it back here than in my front hanging baskets because it kills the, uh, it'll kill the plants in the front hanging baskets. Um, but it'll be interesting when there's like five or six little birds in there. Well, we'll see what happens. And then finally we have the kitchen garden. Um, you might notice the new addition there here in the middle. Uh, I finally put together my centerpiece for the potager, this kitchen garden. It's kind of like a French style of potager. It is built in a symmetrical um, geometric pattern and it was always supposed to have a centerpiece. I just hadn't gotten around to putting one there. Um, and that's basically an old milk jug that I got for Christmas and it's got I gotta figure out a better top.
top situation for it, but right now I just have a potted plant sitting on top of it. We're also working on the um, irrigation system for this garden, and we realized that we needed different connectors to get it to go into the bed, so just waiting to receive those, and then hopefully it should be a pretty quick, hopefully, famous last words to get that set up. Um, these sweet peas have basically done nothing for at least a month and now all of a sudden they're starting to grow. We've had a lot of rain. They like to be watered so that could be why. Um, we've got tons of asparagus, onions, new centerpiece. It's got Silver Falls, Heliotrope, and Diamond Frost Euphorbia. The Heliotrope smells amazing. I planted some more. My flower starts in here. And here's my rain gauge. Um, looks like we have gotten half an inch um, in the past day or two. I think I'm going to only empty it once a week just so I know how much rain we get in a week. So if it's anything less than an inch, we need to water a little bit more, especially for like perennials. Um, I did come out and it's not here anymore because of the rain but I did some diatomaceous earth on some things um, oh I did put down some slogo over in the uh, cut flower garden did some preventative measures for pests that have been eating some of the plants over here and I did reseed some of these beans on the towers. As you can see, we're starting to actually get some of the pole beans are finally starting to grow up the trellis. So that's good to see. It's my centerpiece. And a couple exciting things over here. The ground cherries have fruit on them, you can see right there. They're um, in the tomatillo family, so they actually grow in husks. And this is my first time growing them. But I think when they're ripe, they kind of open up and like will fall on the ground. <laughs> If anyone has a better way of telling when they're ripe, I don't think maybe they turn brown, like the husks turn a little bit brown. Um, let me know. Tomatoes are looking nice. I just came out and tied a bunch last night. Uh, we have some fruit forming on the blueberries tomatoes. You can see that right there. Those are really pretty. I, I personally like the um, blue and purple tomatoes the best. That dark tinge to them is anthocyanins and they taste a little bit more savory, which I like. Um, I don't really like the sweet tomatoes as much. Um, the like really yellow tomatoes. I'm not, a, I'm not a huge sweet person, but kind of depends on your personal taste. The garlic, um, it's not quite ready to harvest yet, but it did start putting up scapes. This is hard neck garlic. I think it's like a red Russian or something like that. As you can see, I came through and pulled off all the garlic scapes. I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. I have them inside. Um, 
the top starts to curl over and it looks like it has like a little bit of a flower bud and you want to cut those off because um, you don't want the plant to put the energy into creating the garlic scape. You want it to put the energy into making the bulb that's underground even bigger. And the garlic scapes taste good. I've, I've never had garlic scapes before, but um, supposedly they taste good. They smell good. Um, so I actually made some garlic scape pesto. And supposedly they're really good just grilled too. But the pesto is pretty good. Um, I did saute the garlic scapes for a few minutes to kind of temper the, the garlicky flavor a little bit. And then I put them in a blender with your standard pesto ingredients, some basil from the garden, um, pine nuts, Parmesan cheese, lemon juice, olive oil, salt. And I think that's it. It's pretty good. It has like a nice mild garlicky flavor to it. I've got this other random tomato that I need to plant somewhere. And then this one in the grow bag uh, is a Seeger tomato, which supposedly is a semi-determinate tomato, so I figured I'd plant it here in this grow bag because it probably won't grow as tall. I'm also letting, as you can see, the suckers go on it, which may or may not be a good idea um, but I figure if it's a ter determinate tomato it's not going to get very big I might as well let it get nice and bushy and try to get more fruit off of it hopefully this uh, grow bag will be enough to support that because um, normally here's the center stalk of the tomato and then the leaves come off to the sides and then these things that grow in the crotch a 45 degree angle, sort of like an upside down armpit. Those are called suckers and I usually just pull those off um, to keep the plants compact and growing on one stalk just so that you can plant them a lot closer together and they can still get airflow and not get diseases. There's my agapanthus which has a ton of flower buds on it so I'm very excited to see that. These are what the garlic scapes look like. And here in the greenhouse, there's the basil. You can see I cut some of it. We've got Chinese long eggplants, something like that, um, have flowers on them. You know, we've got little flower flowers on them, which seems like that's a lot earlier than when I planted them outside last year. So that's good. We've got all the peppers in here. I had to start adding some stakes to support them because they're getting pretty big. Some of them are interesting. So I did pinch my some of my pepper plants last year um, to make them grow um, bushier and get more fruit. But they took so long to produce fruit, I was thinking maybe that wasn't a great choice in our climate. Because um, maybe it's better to just let, let them grow on one stalk and get uh, peppers faster. It's kind of interesting because some of them have like, like done it on their own. You can see this is growing into two stalks. And I didn't pinch it. So I don't know if just certain varieties do that. Um, but yeah, there's like little buds forming, a lot of them on that one. So hopefully we'll have some flowers soon and then some fruit after that. There's another one that kind of branched out on its own. That one did as well. So I haven't done anything to them, I'm just leaving them see what happens in here and I did clear out a lot I'm trying to be done with the whole 
uh, seedling phase. Oh, I have some basil still in here. See, this is probably like a, the cardinal or the Thai basil. Let's see. Thai basil already has flowers on it. Some other peppers that I was maybe going to plant in pots. Um, but I don't have any extra potting soil right now, so I haven't done that yet. Um, so, I don't know. I'm hoping to clear this out completely and just be able to focus on growing the plants. There's a lot of them that I already have out in the garden, so focusing on taking care of those. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. It's a beautiful morning. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. Thanks for watching, and see you next week.